Today we're gonna talk about Golden Kamui and 10 reasons why you should also pick it up right now. Hello everyone, my name is Pietro, also known as Quiet Ambassador, and today we're here to talk about a manga that rapidly won my heart as one of the most exciting, funny and informative manga that I read in the last couple of months. That manga is Golden Kamui by Satoru Noda. I want to start by alerting you that there will be some graphic and violent imagery here, so be prepared or only listen to the audio version of this video if you really don't want to miss it. Golden Kamui is a hidden gem that to me came out of nowhere. When I first read the synopsis, to be honest, I just shrugged my shoulder, thinking of it as just another gory scene revolving around a treasure hunt and nothing more. Boy, if I was wrong, it took me just one chapter to completely change my mind. It threw me into his plot almost immediately, without dragging me around for lengthy exposition and kept his high pace through every single volume so far, slowing down on a specific point that never felt boring or pointless. Instead, these breaks are masterfully used to develop the character and the relationship between them. I want to start with the premise that I've not read every single volume so far, so this is not going to be a review. It's going to be just a recommendation video. You don't have to worry about it. I will try to keep this as poly as free as possible and only talk about the general plot point that you could easily learn about in the first couple of chapters. Our protagonist is Saichi Sugimoto, veteran of the Russo-Japanese War on 1905, famous on the battlefield as Immortal Sugimoto, thanks to his ferocity during the war. At the end of the conflict, Saichi decided to retire in the Hokkaido region, an island in the far north of Japan to work as a gold miner in order to provide for the widow of his fallen comrade and best friend. Here Sugimoto hear a peculiar story about a hidden stash of Aino gold, the location of which is hidden in the tattoos of a group of convicts who escaped from the Abashiri prison. As soon as he hear the story, he decides to search for it, alongside Azirpa, a young Aino girl. The co-protagonist of this story is Azirpa, a young badass Saino girl that early on joins Saichi on the quest for the hidden treasure. This duo conquer me immediately, building up a cute and believable big brother's little sister bond between the two of them. But don't get fooled by the young appearance of the Aino girl. She's an experienced hunter and a fierce warrior that more than one time will save Sugimoto's life with cold blood and a well-timed arrow. Her knowledge of the wilderness will be crucial for their survival, and her resolution to complete the mission is often higher than Sugimoto's. But the protagonists are not the only interesting character in the series, and often it's the rest of the cast that steal the spotlight. Satoru Noda certainly have a knack for creating memorable and likable characters, from the people that will help our heroes to the one that only appear for a brief moment, but above all are the villains. Saichi and Azirpa learn quickly that they are not the only one looking for the gold, and we will learn about these other factions early in the story. The crazy lunatic Lieutenant Tsurumi and his army of the ranged, and the calm and lethal Toshiro Hijikata are just some of the colorful cast of characters that live in this world. It was not enough for this faction to clash against each other, showing how dangerous the treasure hunt actually is. I came into this series knowing nothing about the Ainu culture and learned a great deal about them while reading it. The Ainu are considered the native indigenous people of Japan, located in the north of the nation, mostly in the Hokkaido region. It's impossible not to compare the way that the Japanese people treated the Ainu tribe and the way that the North American treated their indigenous people, pushing them slowly to the margin of society until an almost total extinction. Imagine that the Ainu were unofficially recognized by the Japanese government as indigenous people of Japan in 2019, banning any form of discrimination against them. In Golden Kamui, the Ainu play a crucial role thanks to the co-protagonist Sirpa, teaching us different words from their unique language and explaining about religion and mythology of this ancient society. The entire world is enveloped in mystical meanings, and every religious tale often hides a survival lesson. Even the title of the manga comes from an Aino belief. In that religion, the Kamui is a spirit or a divine being that can take any form, and sometimes even the form of a pile of gold. It's impossible to talk about this series without ever mentioning the wilderness. 
you might even consider it the third protagonist of this manga. A portion of the story, or at least the beginning, take place in the beautiful wild winter forest of the Hokkaido, where food is scarce and the only way to survive is by being smart and cunning. Almost every chapter has at least one tip on how to survive in a wild area with just a bare minimum. How to create a quick makeshift shelter, starting a fire out of nowhere, how to hunt big games or small forest dwelling creatures, creating snowshoes with nothing but branches, how to make seasoning out of wild plants and plenty more. Bear grills, you got nothing on me now. But these hunting techniques are not reserved to just animals. You will learn early on that someone could use the same to hunt other human beings, and this is where this knowledge becomes power. The strong survive and the weak get eaten. Talking about eating, something that nobody ever tells you about Golden Kamui is that this is secretly a food manga. Since the beginning, the food is a crucial component of the story, explaining how to cut, cook and eat different types of creatures. Hysterical are the reoccurring scene of Azirpa offering raw parts of the animal to Saichi as a gift. A delicacy for Aino Cuisine. The dishes look real and they give you the feeling that you could easily replicate it at home. I challenge you to look at this drawing and not have your mouth to water instantly. I will start by saying that I generally don't really get the Japanese humor. And mangas that are usually labeled as comedy can barely steal a smile from me. I don't know if it's a cultural thing or just because my sense of humor was shaped by a different type of media. When I started reading Golden Kamui, the last thing that I was expecting was finding some comedy in it. So imagine my surprise when after just a couple of chapters, I genuinely found myself laughing out loud multiple times. And that feeling continued volume after volume. I find the comedy pace of the author well balanced, ranging from visual gag to well-timed exchange and absurd secondary character that steal a smile from me every time they show up in a new page. I mean, look at Saichi trying to cut the punch of 400 kilo brown bear. The comedy aspect blends perfectly between an emotional reveal and action-packed scenes, taking you on a roller coaster that always keep you guessing. I will never get bored of that basis. This is a part that not everyone will enjoy, or value as a reason to actually read this manga. But for me, this is crucial to ground the story in a believable way. The world is a dangerous place, and you could die anytime. You must be ready to risk your life to go on this treasure hunt, and even more when you are in the wilderness. Nature is cruel, and it doesn't care if you are good or evil. Even if this is only touched briefly in the first couple of volumes, I believe that this will be an important point in the story as it clearly was a defining moment in the past of our protagonist Saichi Sugimoto and his evolution as a soldier. Noda reminds us of the war and his horror, on the impact that it has on the one that survived it and can go home. Some will be forever scarred by it, some will not be able to take it at all, and some will completely go insane and embrace the chaos that the war brought in the psyche. PTSD is a reality, and was at the time even more, since it was not something talked about or dismissed with a simple man-up solution to the problem. Saichi is a product of the conflict, and I hope this will be explored in more depth with the continuation of the series. And last, I just want to talk about the art. From the start to another, got us used to a clean and detailed style of drawing where the action is never confusing and every movement of the characters can be easily read. I don't know you, but I value this a lot in mangaka. The fight scenes, even if not the focal point of the story, sometimes take the front seat and Noda gift us with an awesome splash page of a particularly dynamic actions. Most of the time, the background in the snowy wilderness is left white to convey a sense of desolation and emptiness during the long, cold winter of the Hokkaido but can switch to almost photorealistic nature's panorama when it's needed to give a sense of space and position. Particularly well designed are the small drawings where not explain traps or the details during the story. Overall, it's a pleasant style that never get boring and never overwhelm you with useless details. Golden Kamui is a rare gem that I think everyone should give a chance to. I assure you that with just one volume it will capture you with this bizarre and unconventional charm. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a new format that I would like to bring up again with other series that I'm currently reading. Right now I'm deep on the Summit of the God, so this might be the next series that I do a video on. 
I was also thinking about doing a review of Monster and Pluto since they are still fresh in my mind. But what do you think guys? What should I do next? Let me know in a comment down below. You can check my first video if you're not done yet. But that's all for today, so see you later guys.